sorry I stole your husband, the CEO who makes five million a year. But it's too late now. I warned you, didn't I? I told you that if you don't work hard as a woman, he will fall out of love with you. So, this is your own fault. An ugly woman like you needs to get out of my sight. When I returned home that day, my husband and my mom friend were in the middle of having fun. However, my mom friend had a look of triumph on her face while I was stunned. I was so bewildered by this situation that I could not think of a second thought. It was not because I was shocked that my husband had been taken away from me. I really didn't understand what she was talking about. Um, what do you mean a CEO who makes five million a year? My husband is an ordinary office worker. Huh? Your attitude is pissing me off. What's ordinary about five million? Well, that's because the person who earns five million in this house is... Stop! Please, stop! Ignoring my husband who screamed in grief, I revealed the truth. At that moment, the two of them... My name is Mia. I am a 45-year-old nurse living with my husband of the same age and our 16-year-old son. I lost my father to illness when I was very young, and I felt firsthand the preciousness of life and the importance of living with support from your loved ones. I wanted to help those who were suffering from illnesses, and I have wanted to become a nurse since I was a high school student. I went on to nursing school and spent my days studying hard, passed the national nursing exam and became a nurse. I met my husband 20 years ago. It all started when my husband came to the hospital as a patient while I was at work. My husband was originally the type who easily carried stress from work, and he often complained about his poor health. However, when I saw my husband working hard and straightforwardly at work, I thought, I want to be able to help this man. I began to examine him with a strong desire to see him. We started seeing each other not only at the hospital, but also in private. Later, my husband proposed to me and I readily accepted, and we were married. A year later, a healthy baby boy was born and my husband and I both said, He's so cute. We have given him all the love we could muster and he is growing up fast. We had lived in the city for 15 years, but two years ago, my husband was transferred to a branch office in his hometown. We moved into an apartment near my husband's parents' house and continue to live happily together. Incidentally, my husband's brother and his family live with my parents-in-law. I'm glad to be back in my hometown after a long time. I like the comfort of being able to lead a relaxed life, unlike in the city. My husband missed his hometown and is now working hard at his new job. I also changed my workplace to work as a nurse, and at first I had a hard time getting used to it. At that time, my husband said to me, You seem to be going through a lot at your new workplace. I'll be happy to help you with cooking laundry and other household chores. His offer to help made me so happy. My son went to a high school in my husband's hometown. It was a high school with a lot of activities, and my husband and I were so close that we could go to his school events as a couple to see our son. However, around the time our son was entering his second year of high school, my husband suddenly became absent-minded and pensive. My husband, who had cherished our son with me, must have felt frustrated that he could not make time for himself. He tried to keep to himself as if he felt he no longer needed to bond with our son, who had grown up to be a fine child. Whenever my son or I tried to talk to him, he would get angry and say, I'm concentrating right now, so don't talk to me. Also, perhaps because he feels uncomfortable at home, my husband, who has always returned home on time, has suddenly started working overtime or going on business trips every day. I was wondering what my husband was doing. 
because overtime work is one thing, but business trips are not something that happen every day. Hey, it seems like you're busy every day here. Are you feeling okay? It's not like it's supposed to be a particularly busy season, but do you have to work that much overtime or go on that many business trips? When I asked him that, my husband remained as brusque as ever. Who cares what I do? I'll be home late again today, so can you cook dinner for me? My husband not only asked me to cook, but also asked me to do the laundry and cleaning, and he never did them himself. Although I felt uncomfortable with the change in my husband, I hoped that we could go back to our usual routine. The story goes back a little, when my husband and I went to our son's high school festival. Huh? Could it be Camilla? My husband spotted a certain woman and called out to her. Lucas, is that you? Long time no see. We haven't seen each other since high school, right? This woman, Camilla, was a former classmate of my husband. Camilla was a single mom friend who had a daughter the same age as my son. Hi, I am Camilla, a former classmate of Lucas. I have a daughter, and she's in the same class as your son. She talks a lot about him to me. I hear that he's very popular and stands out at school. Hi, I'm Mia. My son is quiet at home, so I'm surprised that he stands out at school. Are you and my husband friends from high school? Yes, that's right. He, like your son, was the type to stand out at school. But he wasn't good at talking to women. He used to get nervous when he talked to me. Oh, come on. That's enough about the past. I was a little glad to get to know about how my husband was in the past. Camilla and I became good friends through this and we had lunch together when I was off work or after a night shift. However, there was one thing I did not like about Camilla. She would try to act like she was better than me. Mia, did you come here without any makeup? No, I did put on makeup. What? Really? I don't see it at all. And the clothes you're wearing are so plain. You should be a little more careful about your parents, don't you think? If you don't, one day Lucas will get tired of you, you know. Oh, please, stop joking around. As for me, I wanted to be left alone, but I know exactly what Camilla means. Because although she was 45 years old like me, she was so beautiful that she looked 10 years younger than me on the outside. I thought about asking Camilla about her makeup and what she wears, but I was worried about whether I could keep up with the conversation myself, so I decided not to. One day, a few days after getting to know Camilla, my husband suddenly complained of a fever. It looks like the bill for all that overtime work may have come due. Mia, I'm sorry, but could you take me to the hospital? I said okay, and immediately took my husband to the hospital where I work. Then I saw Camilla in the waiting room of the hospital. Camilla, you have a fever too? Are you feeling alright? Yes, what a coincidence. Don't worry, my fever isn't that high. My husband and Camilla were conversing in a casual manner, but for some reason they looked momentarily awkward with each other. A few days later, my sister-in-law, my brother-in-law's wife, called me to her parent-in-law's house, saying that she has something to report. I asked, what's wrong? And my sister-in-law replied, calm down and listen to me. I witnessed something crazy. Your husband and a glamorous woman with heavy makeup went into a hotel. It means that my sister-in-law witnessed the two of them around the time when they both had a fever. I was not surprised because I had a vague idea of the relationship between my husband and Camilla at the hospital and at the time of the fever. I tried to somehow get proof that my husband was having an affair with Camilla with my own hands, 
So I asked my husband to work the day shift when he was originally scheduled to work the night shift because I was working the night shift at the hospital. This is because I thought that my husband might bring Camilla home while I was at the hospital for the night shift. Of course, I told my husband that I was working the night shift, so he does not know that I will be coming home during the day. Also, my son had just gotten a part-time job, so my husband assumed that no one would come to the house. When I came home from my day shift, sure enough, there were strange shoes at the door. I immediately recognized them as Camilla's, as they were stylish, expensive-looking shoes. So I took a deep breath and sneaked into the house. When I went to the bedroom, I found that my husband and Camilla were engaged in a grand affair. I quietly started recording on my phone without them noticing. At one point, when I had all the evidence, I broke into the bedroom. I got a perfect shot of you two cheating. The two of them screamed in surprise at my presence. Mia, I thought you were on the night shift. And you've been taking video of us with your phone all this time? Why the hell would you do that? This is voyeurism. If you're going to interrupt us, get out now. My husband was upset and yelled at me, but I felt insane that he didn't realize he was in the wrong. I'm sorry I stole your husband, the CEO who makes five million a year. But it's too late for you. I need you to get the hell out of here. Even though I also exposed Camilla for cheating, instead of panicked, she acted normal. I was also uncomfortable with the fact that she referred to my husband as the CEO of a company with an annual income of $5 million. Um, who in the world are you talking about? A CEO who makes $5 million a year? My husband is just an ordinary office worker. That attitude really pisses me off. Don't be so modest. Five million is nothing out of the ordinary. Can you stop with your nonsense? Camilla raised her voice in anger, but I calmly refuted her. How can you say that when you're the one always bullying me? And besides, the CEO who makes five million a year is not my husband, but it's my son, you know. The moment I told her that, Camilla said, What? What do you mean? And her face turned pale. So, my son is a high school student, but he also runs a company. Why don't you look up my son's company on your phone? Camilla immediately did a research on her phone and arrived at the website of my son's company. There, she found that my son was running a video content company and his many accomplishments were listed in full. I was curious as to how Camilla could have mistaken my husband for my son, but the reason was so simple. My husband had had a crush on Camilla in high school, and he was quite happy to see her again when he went to school events with me. There, they secretly exchanged contact information. My husband lied about his own status to get Camilla's attention, and Camilla believed it and thought he was rich, so she had a relationship with him. Moreover, my husband spent his savings to buy things for Camilla. This explains why Camilla was so particular about her makeup and clothes when she came to lunch with me. Fortunately, my husband could not touch my son's money because he himself kept it in a hidden safe at the bank. What my husband did was clearly embezzlement, and I pitied him for using our son's status to get the attention of a woman. When Camilla found out that my son was the president of a company with an annual income of five million, she suddenly apologized to me. Could you please not make this public? I'll break up with Lucas and I'll pay you alimony or whatever you want. All right then, I will proceed with the alimony through my lawyer in the future. I put the matter to rest and had Camilla leave immediately. My son and I lived in a hotel for a while, leaving my husband at home while my son looked for a new place to live. One day, ready for the divorce, alimony, and child support proceedings, I returned from the attorney's office to the hotel. 
However, I could not get inside the room because it was chained from the inside. I peeked into the room through the door and saw that my son and a girl were arguing about something. I banged on the door more and more and called out loudly for my son. My son responded to my voice and immediately opened the door and I found out that the girl my son was with was Camilla's daughter. This girl was following me after school. And the moment I entered the room, she walked in with me and just kept approaching me. She asked me where I kept my money. I refused to tell her and then she started to argue with me. I knew that Camilla's daughter had approached my son and that Camilla had sent her. Can you just go home, please? Oh, and tell your mother never to let you near my son again. I sent Camilla's daughter away and she left with tears in her eyes. The next day, Camilla and her daughter came into our hotel room. Because of you people, my daughter came home yesterday crying. What are you going to do about it? She was making a fuss about something that was obviously a lie, but my son calmly dealt with it. How can you lie so openly? I was threatened by your daughter, so can you please stop playing the victim? Besides, I recorded our conversation from the time your daughter came into the room. If anything happens to me again, I will spread the word at the school. At my son's sharp words, Camilla and her daughter could only cry and apologize. At that moment, I rejoiced in my heart at my son's growth, thinking, he has really grown up. Also, my husband persistently contacted me and my son to see if he missed us being separated, but we kept ignoring him. In the meantime, we hired a contractor and moved out. After about a month passed, I met with my husband for the first time in a long time for divorce proceedings. Apparently, rumors of my husband's infidelity had spread in our hometown, and his company knew about it, making it difficult for him to stay in the office. He had been dumped by Camilla, and his face had become gaunt, and his spirits were low. I don't want to get divorced like this. I'll apologize for everything I've done, but let me get back together with you. Mia, please. My husband did not agree to the divorce until the very end, and he even got down on his knees and asked me to let him get back together with me. I don't care what you say now. I have no intention of getting back together with you. It's so disgusting that you come crying to me with snot running down your nose. This is the last time I'm seeing you. Goodbye forever. I had no feelings left for my husband and concentrated on taking out all my anger on him. He seemed to have given up quickly and quietly left the place. My divorce from my husband was finalized and he was to pay me a large amount of alimony and child support. My husband was also cut off from his son and was in a miserable state. My sister-in-law told me that my in-laws were so furious that they had banned Lucas from coming back to his parents' house. I told her, I'm sorry to hear that, but he totally deserved it. My husband has spent all his savings on Camilla, so he did not have a penny left in his pocket. In the midst of all this, my husband had to pay alimony and child support, so he was saddled with a large amount of debt. Unable to stay in his hometown, he resigned from his job and moved to a distant town. There, he has been working at a variety of dangerous high-paying jobs in order to pay alimony and child support. However, when he still doesn't have enough money, he tries to beg for help from our son. Naturally, our son, who cut ties with his father, refuses to receive his call saying, I don't have a father. Camilla also had to pay the alimony due to my son's blackmailing behavior, even though she had left my husband. Because of the cold and harsh situation in the world, Camilla, who had been working as a contract employee for the city, had to resign from her job. She is now working at night to earn money. Before my husband and I returned to our hometown, Camilla had also made flirtatious advances toward my brother-in-law, who was a city employee and her boss. No wonder my sister-in-law, who was about to have her husband stolen from her, was so supportive of me. Camilla began to be harassed by other mom friends in the neighborhood, who pointed their fingers behind her back, 
painted graffiti on her house, vandalized her car, and so on. Camilla's daughter was also harassed. Camilla's daughter could no longer stand the lifestyle and decided to drop out of high school and leave her hometown with her parents. My son, on the other hand, still manages a video content company and still makes a hefty amount of money, which he puts into asset management and savings. He is also working hard academically, and in the spring of his senior year of high school, he decided to enter a prestigious university in California. This prompted my son and I to return to LA. I live at home and my son lives alone. We would both start new lives. Although my husband is gone, I hope that we can continue to live together happily.